Hey, first day of school. What's up? Actually, today is the second day of 11th grade, or as Americans call it, junior year. Yeah, American education system. It's, it's a mess. We got a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Why can't you just call it year four, year five, year six? Why does it have to be this complicated? Right now, I'm I'm in year five, all right? And um, anyway, um, yeah, school, school is boring. But what's not boring are these albums, and I'm going to talk about them. Today, I'm going to talk about four studio albums and two EPs by the same artist. The first album that I'm going to talk about is the new Nicki Minaj album, Queen. So, Nicki Minaj needs no introduction. She's one of the most famous female rappers out there right now. But recently, we get more female rappers climbing up the ladder, becoming more popular, especially rappers like Cardi B. So, now that the competition is a little more tense for Nicki Minaj... We expect Nicki Minaj to release an album that's even better, right? Wrong. Her new album is uh, is actually really boring, pretty average, pretty generic. And her new album, Queen, tries to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, resulting in almost nothing. And there are also a lot of filler tracks in the album that I don't really care for. Uh, but however, there are a, a few great tracks on the album too, in my opinion, such as uh, the promotional single Chun Li, which has a very catchy synth lead. The beat is very driving, and uh, the the flow of Nicki Minaj is very amazing. It's bold, it's fun, and it's catchy. And I also really like the horn hits and the gong sounds. It has this Asian flavor to it, even though it's not really that Asian, if you know what I mean. And it's just Nicki Minaj in her braggadocious state, in a good way. And um, it's it's definitely my favorite track off of Queen. And we also have Good Form, which, which is another banger where Nicki Minaj raps even faster. We get some cold-blooded pianos that keeps on playing looping in the background that's pretty nice and um Nicki, Nicki Minaj's personality in the song is more cartoony and zany and wild and uh her personality is really well portrayed in this track as well as the funny lyrics I pretty enjoy that as well also the track Heart White even though it's it's not as great as Chun Li or Good Form in my opinion it's still a very nicely produced and written melodic trap banger and we also have the track barbie dreams even though it's not great or anything i still think it's pretty good it's okay i kind of like the dangly crispy guitars in the back and um again the lyrics of this track is really funny and it just portrays Nicki minaj as this whack funny person and on this track Nicki minaj kind of fantasizes having sex with all of these rappers and R&B singers nowadays curving with 6 9 getting together with Young Thug and uh, she also kind of talks about DJ Khaled being fat and Drake crying which are pretty funny and she also referenced a bunch of other rappers such as Eminem and Designer and uh, it's a it's a really really funny track and I do like it also we have the track Bed featuring Ariana Grande it's not great, but it's pretty sweet, pretty mellow, and it's a nice breather in the track list. And then we have the more generic tracks that are almost bangers, but didn't really make it, didn't really hit as hard. Like Miami, LLC, or um, Chun Sway, I guess, and um, I guess Coco Chanel is almost a banger, but... Nah. Nope. Yeah, it's they, uh, these tracks are pretty generic. And we also have other generic tracks that are more interesting. 
in terms of music, but you know, the, the features of the tracks are pretty lame. Majesty features Eminem, and again, Eminem has to rap super fast. Eminem's rapping so fast, I think he's having a stroke or something. And then we have Rich Sex featuring Lil Wayne, which is a very uninteresting, boring ass generic track. And Lil Wayne, for some reason, he he's mumbling and his vocals are very faint. It's like he's he's mumbling to death. It's kind of scary, actually. And of course, we have the track Chun Sui, which I don't care for at all. It almost sounds like a banger, but really, it's just a filler track. And it's a very boring six minute long bar exchange between Nicki Minaj and Sway Lee. And Sway's vocals and delivery on this track are really trashy. And then we also have even more generic filler tracks such as Nip Tuck and Sir. Nip Tuck? What kind of song title is that? And given the song title is this whack the song itself is actually really boring and underwhelming and we also have the uh, album opener ganja burns which has this slappy r&b beat and uh it's just such a watered down washed down start it's so uninteresting it's just such a bad way to open an album the track run and hide is also a filler track except it's even more boring more dreamier and more euphoric, but in a bad way, in a sloppy and slumbering way. And it's way slower as well. It's kind of pointless. And uh, there is also an R&B track in the track list, Come See About Me, where Nicki Minaj essentially sings. Her singing isn't bad, but it's just kind of weird in the full context of the album. And the album kind of ends off with um, Coco Chanel, which is a pretty, again, generic, predictable track that's pretty average. And then the track doesn't end, actually. The ending of the track is actually the outro track. So we have another outro, not another outro, we have an outro track to the album called Inspirations Outro. But actually, it is just an extended ending to Coco Chanel. So that's pretty stupid. <laughs> so uh, yeah, overall, this album is just such a mixed bag. A lot of tracks are just filler tracks. They're generic, they're average, they're boring, they're washed out. And uh, they kind of overshadowed the great tracks on the album. I'm giving Nicki Minaj's Queen a 5 out of 10. The best is Chun-Li, and the worst is mm, Run and Hide. The next album I'm going to talk about is the controversial new Death Heaven album, Ordinary Corrupt Human Love. San Francisco, black gaze, black metal, screamo, post-rock band, metal band, Death Heaven is back with their fourth studio album. And this album... It's, it's very, very highly anticipated by a lot of the metal fans and the um, metalheads, right, metalheads. Almost forgot about the term, metalheads, uh, all across the globe. And uh, we have the infamous review from Anthony Fantano. He gave it a 5 out of 10, which is pretty shocking. Me personally, me personally, I don't agree with him all that much, but he had made some pretty solid points in his review. And uh, this album is packed with long-winded, multifaceted, epic tracks that are really ambitious and larger than life, but uh, there are also a lot of uh, boring and cumbersome and cliche moments on the album that can't be dismissed. Such as the album opener, You Without End, and uh, it's, just, it's just a bad album opener, it's not that exciting. It's, um, it tries to be peaceful, it tries to sound optimistic, but it just ends up boring because it's sort of a cliche post-rock thing. And the pianos are really plain. We have a spoken word section, which is very melodramatic, and it just came off as kind of corny. And overall, it's such a cumbersome and boring 
album opener. I don't know why did they put that as the opener. But then things turned for the better on the second track, Honeycomb, which is a promotional single for the album. And uh, the chord progression is way more strong, way more harsh, the drums are bombastic, and we get these screams, which I'm not a huge fan at first, but these screams became so chilling and wintry and solid, it really blends well with the instrumentals. And I also really enjoy the reverby guitars. And uh, this track overall just sounds very epic. It feels like climbing to the highest mountain to, to, to peek through the clouds. It's crazy. And I also really like the uh, guitar session, the section, where it kind of turns into a more indie rockish tone. And um, I enjoyed the track. And then we have Canary Yellow, which is more mellow. But uh, eventually it kind of builds up higher and we get these very harsh guitar riffs and sharp guitar leads. And um, this track feels more wondrous, it feels more disorienting, it feels more adventurous. And on the last leg of the track, we get a very atmospheric black metal backdrop backing this melancholic epic soaring guitar solo and I thought that's really beautiful. I think that's really beautiful as well. But then we get the track Near, which is pretty much a four minute long, five minute long breather interlude thing. That's really boring, very washed out, and it's basically a filler track that isn't doing that much. I'd rather have a a one minute long ambient track than than this stuff because why i don't really get why did they put this track here but uh but yeah it's it's not it's not great it's not good and we get these faint mumbly vocals in the back that's not doing anything particularly but then again the album kind of reaches another peak with the track glint which is way more interesting and uh, the musical atmosphere of this track is really impactful. It's a little melancholic and sad and downtrodden at first, but then it builds to something triumphant and explosive and climactic. We also get these vicious metal riffs that I really enjoy, and overall the track is such an epic and multifaceted track. It sounds really interesting. And, uh, and then we get another breather track, Night People, where instead of another black gaze screamo metal track we get a shorter acoustic piano ballad that's really dark and elegant and it features chelsea wolf chelsea wolf's vocals on this track actually brings a lot of personality to the track it makes this track sound way more eerie and uh, her vocals just match up really well with uh, george the vocalist of deaf heaven and um, I really like the beginning of Night People, but as it kind of builds to the chorus, it kind of gets a little messy, a little weird, and a little detourish all of a sudden. But still, I enjoy the track for what it is. And the album kind of ends off with Worthless Animal, which, even though at first it doesn't sound as interesting, it sounds kind of boring and cumbersome and cliche at first, but it really builds up and cooks up into something epic and wild. And um, and we also get this uh, shoegaze vibe in the back that kind of gives the relief side of the track, if you know what I mean. And the chord progressions are more adventurous, they are more epic, and we also get the soaring melodies that are playing crucial roles in the track. And at the end, there's this explosive climax that ends the album off pretty sweetly and um, overall um, this album it's not bad but nor is it that great it's not cutting edge it's not that innovative we've heard this kind of music before but still there are really well written epic soaring tracks and guitar moments on this album guitar moments moments in general and um, the 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 last two tracks, um, while they're not great, I still kind of enjoy them. And I say my favorite track here is Glint, and my least favorite is Near. I'm giving Deaf Heaven's Ordinary Corrupt Human Love a 7, strong 7 out of 10.
And up next we have uh, Haru Nemuri with Haruto Siura or Haruto Shura. I don't know. I am Asian, but I'm not Japanese. When it comes to Japanese or Korean, I have zero clue what the hell they're saying. But I like exploring music from all sorts of countries in the world. Anyway, this album is really interesting, even though it is labeled as a J-pop album. It's also a J-rap album and also a J-rock album. Yeah, J-rock. Japanese rock. J-rock. And uh, it's more underground rock-ish as well, and it's more experimental as well, surprisingly. So it's not your average glossy catchy, lowest common denominator, annoying, obnoxious J-pop, if you know what I mean. This kind of J-pop is the J-pop that I like. And um, the the rapping on this track, Haru Nemuri's rapping on the track, on the entire album is actually really great as well. Her delivery is very hurried, very tense, very energetic and passionate as well. Sometimes he, she gets so tense, she kind of screams and growls a little bit, which is pretty interesting. And it gives a lot of personality to the album. And uh, overall, this album is laced with catchy melodies and passionate performances. However, not all tracks are great on this album. There are about three to four tracks that I don't dig that much, like 19 or Lost Planet. They're just meh. They're... They, they they have great moments in them, but in the full picture, they don't really do much necessarily. But there are also a, a few great, amazing tracks. Like the, the album opener, Make More Noise of You. Make more noise of you. The track is loud. It's hard hitting. It's blistering. The guitars are very driving and fiery and passionate. And overall, it's just such a such a blast of, 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 not emotions, but such a blast of joy. Maybe the only thing that I hope that this track could have done is um, make it longer, because it's only one minute and forty four seconds longer. Make it three minute long. It'll be great. And then we have a uh, Narashite, the second track, which is very catchy and more euphoric and blissful. I really like the up and down synth strings whatever noise that is um yeah but uh whatever it is it it's really well produced really well mixed and the title track i actually really enjoyed as well it's more moodier it's more sensible and uh in the middle of the track it kind of speeds up and these instrumentals kind of builds up to a uh, greater tension and then it kind of breaks into these dissonant instrumentals with these sour guitars. And then it goes back into a huge explosive climax and it's such a ride. And we also have a Sekai wo, um, Sekai wo Torikai e Shite o Kore. Again, I don't know Japanese. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I really like the uh, very... Uh, innocent and naive yells. Ah, 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 ah. Sekai wo, sekai wo, Me trying to pronounce Japanese. Um, yeah, it's a really fun and anthemic synth pop alt rock blend that's really exciting, really adrenaline pumping, and blissful. And we also have the track You Me, You Me, Wo Me, You. Yeah, you, me, wo, me, you, it's more tense, it's more elegant, more heavy and emotional, and it's a, a very nice piano rock track. And I also really like the dramatic glistening chords that really builds up the atmosphere and the tension of the track. And the album ends off with rock and roll, wa shinanai, with totsuzen shunen. And, uh... The guitars on this track are more sturdy, and the instrumentals are way more fiery and noisy and cutting edge. And uh, it's just such a memorable and uh, very passionate ending to the album. 
And overall, I really like this album. Really. Good J-pop album. Imagine that. Uh, my favorite track here. That's actually a great question. I've never thought... Uh, I, I'd, I'd say the album opener is probably my favorite. Or, actually, you know what? Sekai wo Torika Ishete Okore. That's my favorite, actually. And my least favorite is Lost Planet, because it's pretty predictable on average. I'm giving Haru Nemuri's Haruto Siura an 8 out of 10. Yep. And up next, I'm going to talk about the new OCs or DOCs album. Smote Reverser. Originally, I... Well, well, that was intense. Originally, I wanted to give this a uh, full-length full length album review, since their last album, Orc, is pretty damn amazing. Uh, turns out that this album is not as amazing, so I'm just going to put it in the mini-albums review, and I'm going to leave my album review slot, my full-length album review, review slot, for Idols and Ariana Grande and Eminem. Anyway, uh, they have released a lot of great albums in the past. A Weird Exits and, of course, Orc from last year, which are packed with exciting and raw and intense metal jams, blending garage, psych, and punk rock together in a fantastic fashion. And uh, we have Smoke Reverser. And uh, I can already tell two great things about this album before I start listening. The song titles are amazing. They're amazing. And the album cover, the album cover, pretty, pretty fucking nuts. It's like an interdimensional beast coming to the world, destroying all the buildings, setting them on fire, and it's just such a wild, whack story. However, the album itself is not that wild or whack. Even so, I still enjoy a great deal of the tracks. The album starts off with Sentient Una, which has a very, very fun and cutting-edge drum pattern where it's an 8-8 beat, but on the 7th and 8th beat, it, it kind of goes up and goes wild, and then it goes loop again and again and again, so that's pretty interesting. And we also get these explosive instrumentals that builds up to a, a very high level. It's really fun, it's energetic, and it's exciting. And we have the second track, Enrique El Cobra... Co Enrique... En Enrique... Enrique El Co Cobrador. Co yeah, whatever. Uh, anyway, the vocals on this track is very devilish, and the guitars, the bass on this track is way more... Uh, hard-hitting, way more impactful, way more vicious and fuzzy at the same time, and it's just a very loud and exciting track. That kind of reminds me of Night Expo and Animated Violence, except it's even more wild. Not wild, but heavy. Yeah, heavy is the word. But still, uh, Night Expo and Animated Violence are a little more wild than this track. And then we have the third track. C, which is a weird, odd track in the track listing. It's this strange, odd, jazzy, blues rock track that doesn't really have any reason for being in there. It's groovy, and it's it's kind of fun. It's lighthearted and, and bouncy. I like it. But um, I feel like the boop, boop, boop in the background are kind of obnoxious. But then the album redeems itself once again with Overthrown, which is one of my favorite tracks of the year so far already. It's extremely intense, extremely loud, noisy, and dirty, and nasty. It's the closest thing the band had come to becoming metal. But yet they still cling onto their punk garage psych roots. And we get these speedy, insane, maniacal, psychotic drums and these abrasive, 
up and down guitars. Dun 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 dun. dun. The screams by John Dwyer are really distorted and scorched. It's fantastic. It's adrenaline pumping, and it's such a thrill. But then the next track, that last piece, is um, it's more underwhelming. It's seven minutes long. It's downtrodden and really faint and buried at first. It feels like the instrumentals are not that interesting. On the second half of this track, the track kind of goes crowd rock. It becomes more exciting. It builds to a climax and then it ends. And um, I kind of like the ending of the track, but still the first half is kind of underwhelming. And then we have the track Moonbog, which I didn't like too much at first, but it is actually a pretty heavy, frightening ballad. It's really moody, it's really deep in terms of music, and uh, it's uh, it's a way more heavy-hearted track. And um, I enjoy the concept of it as well. And then we have the 12-minute long Anthemic Aggressor. Why is it in the track list again? Remind me, why is it there? I, I'm 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 really scratching my head when I'm when I'm listening to this track because it's twelve minutes long of improvisation and pretty much nothing else. The guitars they're pretty inaudible. The doodly solos are pretty aimless and overall it's just twelve minutes of noise that doesn't really build up to anything that meaningful or fun. But then we have the next track, Abysmal Urn, which is one of the better tracks of the album. The guitars are, the electric guitars are very fiery. It feels like they're creating sparks. And we also get the very uh, nervous vocals by John Dwyer, which sounds really rebellious. And it sounds like it's about to explode at any given moment. And that's pretty fantastic. Also, I love the next track, Needle, no. No, wait, it's a Nail House Needle Boys. And uh, it's a really fun, crowd rockian psych punk, groovy jam. And I also really like the wailing guitar leads. The keyboards are amazing. And overall, it's such a, a, a fun and energetic and exciting rock blend. Yep. And then on to the next page of my script. Up next, we have two very underwhelming and head-scratching tracks. We have Flies Bump Against the Glass, which is a pretty slow and groovy track that doesn't build up to anything. It feels like an overextended interlude. And we also get these keyboards, which are pretty occult-toned. I kind of like that, but that's pretty much the only thing likable about the track. And the album ends off with Beat Quest, which is again very moody, kind of slow, very uneventful, and really odd, really. And uh, the the synth melodies are a little weird, a little obnoxious at times, even wah 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 wah. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a little annoying sometimes, but um, even so, I still think this album is pretty solid. It has its amazing explosive highs but also it's very underwhelming and head scratching lows but still i feel like there are more hits than misses on this album so um my favorite track is overthrown and least favorite is anthemic anthemic aggressor i'm giving it a seven out of ten finally i'm gonna do a review on two eps again just like the last mini albums review video but this time I'm gonna release two e, not release. I'm gonna review two EPs released by A Blue Ghost, which are two EPs released at the same time. They're like yin and yang. They're like positive and negative. One of them is Clear Tame EP, and one of them is Steel Mogu EP. I'm gonna put it side by side by my head right now. And A Blue Ghost, if you don't know him, he is a UK electronic artist who makes all these crazy, mind-bending, ADHD, futuristic, sci-fi, dizzying, other-dimensional electronic music with very interesting lore. And Igloo Ghost released uh, his debut studio album, Neo Wax Bloom, last year, which is very cutting-edge and insane and mind-bending. And I put it in one of my... 
it's it's in my top 40 favorite albums of the year so that's that's nice and now he released two EPs that expanded his lore his whole igloo ghost lore and uh, it's also more advanced and enhanced than the material on neo wax bloom let's start off by talking about clear tommy ep the ep starts off with an intro cut which is titled polio mamu yeah the the the, the song titles the track titles on on his music on his tracks on his albums EPs are pretty weird they sound like uh, a mix of Afrikaans a mix of Japanese and uh, a very slight mix of um, I, I don't I don't even know but uh, yeah the first actual track is new vectors which has these beautiful beats and strings against these glossy synths and I also really like the like how the beat is formulated around this vocal sample ticks 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 and uh and overall it's such an such an epic and otherworldly uh, ep opener it feels like entering to another dimension on another planet and i also like uh the operatic inspirations on this track as well and then we have the title track which is also one of my favorite singles of the year so far clear tame at first it gets really slow and dreary with Igloo Ghost himself rapping. And then it kind of breaks into this very gorgeous strings instrumental, which is absolutely beautiful. And then it's and then Igloo Ghost kind of replies back. Because on this track it's like uh, a conversation between the artist and Igloo Ghost itself. So Igloo Ghost kind of replies back with these insane super speed maniacal glitchy beats and it's just super glitchy it's shifting everything's glitching out the next track nama or nama is a little weaker a little more typical a little blander as well but still doesn't take away the fact that it's pretty good it's decent and then the album kind of ends the EP kind of ends off with Shrine Hacker, which is eight minutes long. And we get these high-pitched vocals that really builds up the atmosphere, which is very eerie and mind-bending. I also really like the punchy beats and the fidgety rhythm of the track as well. It's not great, but it's pretty good. So I'm giving uh, Clear Tommy EP an 8 out of 10. And my favorite is the title track. And my least favorite is Nama. And then let's talk about Steel Mogu EP. Steel Mogu. That's a really cool EP title. The intro cut is titled First Voids. And that's really cool. And then we get the title track. Oh yeah, by the way, I didn't tell you this, but Clear Tame is white and Steel Mogu is black. And it's like two opposites. And they kind of sound a little different, but only a little bit. Clear Tame is a little more bright, a little sweeter, a little shinier, while Steel Mogu is a little more aggressive, a little darker, and definitely more futuristic and cold-blooded. And we get the title track, Steel Mogu, which is uh, pretty linear, and it also has this nocturnal feature to it. Actually, this applies to all the tracks on Steel Mogu EP, the nocturnal feature to it, which is really nice. It feels like the nighttime is happening. But um, the Steel Mogu title track is uh, is uh, kind of bland, kind of a little uninteresting. It's a little typical, a little weaker. Still pretty cutting edge, pretty nuts, and uh, it's it's okay, I guess. And then we have Black Light Ultra, which is my favorite track off of the EP. It's super cutting edge, super atmospheric, and we get these speedy chipmunk vocals as well as these heavy-hearted choir yells or more like a, a woman uh, singing like like a choir individual it's pretty damn epic i'm gonna have to tell you that and then we have the track may mode which i don't like as much as blacklight ultra and night racer but still it's super zany super wild super head spinning and it's like 
dubstep, but you're going through uh, a huge, intense, warping wormhole at the same time. It's pretty insane. And uh, yeah, even though it's not great, it's really warpy, it's really mind-bending, and I like it. Oh yeah, I also didn't mention that Blacklight Ultra used Danny Brown's Ain't It Funny as a sample, which is really tasteful, and I like it. And the EP ends off with Night Racer, which has, again, a, re a really epic set of chord progressions, chords, really epic set of chords, and um, it really feels like racing in the middle of the night, in the middle of the midnight. It just feels like this uh, large, dark, empty space of, of lines, and you're on this vehicle, and and you're about to race with all other weird high-tech vehicles on these uh, yellow and lime and pink neon racetracks curving and going to the sky and curving downwards, going through all these structures and buildings and cuboids. It's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. And, um, yeah, I... I, I enjoy this EP as well, even though it's not as good as Clear Tame EP. I'm still giving it a 7 out of 10. My favorite track is Blacklight Ultra, and my least favorite is the title track. So, have you listened to all these albums and EPs from 1 to 10? How much did you rate them? Like if you like them, hate if you hate them, and subscribe if you want more. And, as I have mentioned, uh, full-length Ariana Grande... Eminem and Idols reviews coming soon.